But we're going to give you three guys that are sleepers that could win your fantasy football league this year. We're going to go one by one here. We're going to go all three at the yeah. same time. We'll go one by one. So I'll start okay. us off. Okay. Right. Javante Williams, running back for the Denver Broncos. Easy peasy choice here. He's he taking the majority good. of the snaps. Melvin Gordon's already has an injury happening right now. He's already injury prone. And this here's the stat that proves it. Anytime mm-hmm. Russell Wilson has made a deep playoff run, he's had a thousand plus yard rusher with eight or more touchdowns. That's Javante Williams. Yeah, a lot of check downs out of the backfield, gonna get a lot of groundwork. <laughs> and it's it's the Javante Williams is a, a top three. Like, if you want an up-and-comer, if you want a guy that's going to break out and win, that's one right there. He'll definitely – and according to mock drafts, he's going in the third, fourth round. Mm-hmm. I don't bad. think I don't think that'll hold. But this year, according to mock drafts, he's a third, fourth round guy. Who do you got, Barrett? Well, I was going to say save this guy for last, but we'll, we'll just go first, okay? Now, the question was – I read – is trash we will see kyle we will see and compare as the seasons end so uh but i'm going yeah i think i like williams a lot too i have him in a couple of leagues especially in a Get keeper cat out of there. i did keep Get that cat out of there i don't know where the cat is there's no cat <laughs> i don't know what else to do anyways guys i'm gonna go with kirk cousins here Mm, a Kirky, a Kirky Cousins, huh? And I say this because his average draft position is like in the 130s. Last year, he was one of the few quarterbacks, though, 35 plus touchdowns. Okay. He's getting an offensive, an offensive minded head coach. You still got Justin Jefferson, who's soaring to superstardom. Still got Adam Thielen. Dalvin Cook. I mean, that offense is poised for Kirk Cousins to have possible an MVP type season. Not saying he's going to be MVP, Derek Carr fans, uh, and just explode in fantasy. I mean, a lot. I, I'm talking like probably 45 plus hundred yards, 40 plus touchdowns. Like the potential is there, and for where he's going in a draft, I'm telling you, I've already done one draft where it was literally. I mean. Kirk Cousins got picked after Tua. I mean, it's crazy. You put the cat down. Nice. You know? Yeah, I guess the cats. I don't know where the cat is. <laughs> but I think I, I like think, I, I like it. Yeah. Kirk, I think you're on to something. Cat like right that here, Kirk Cousins could lead you, especially by value picked by draft position. So in the early rounds, when idiots are taking mid-tier quarterbacks like Vance taking Derek Carr probably in like the fifth round this Saturday, you could <laughs> you could wait to like the tenth round to get like a quarterback, especially in Kiefer leagues where you want some younger guys, some some rookies and stuff like that, or dynasty leagues. If you start up a dynasty league and you just need that, you need that Billy, <laughs> I didn't I didn't call Vance an idiot. I'm just saying he could be an idiot if he does take it. But uh <laughs> Uh, <laughs> anyway. I'll probably buy me a Derek Carr jersey this year. Dude, oh, I have man. He should. But yeah, I'm telling you, Kirk Cousins, just be on the lookout. Um and take take skill position players and wait on a Kirk Cousins if you don't get a top tier quarterback early. Boom. Mm. So yeah, you got? He's, he's throwing the ball to Justin Jefferson. It's solid. Yeah. JJ's. Okay, I'll start out. Let me just let me just start out with J.K. Dobbins, okay? I'm going to explain to you. J.K. Dobbins is the man in Baltimore, okay? <clears throat> J.K. Dobbins obviously missed all of last year due to an injury, so he, he missed his second season coming up. But as a rookie, J.K. Dobbins exploded in the second half of this season. Uh, in his last – Six games, he had a touchdown apiece in his last game of the season. His rookie year, he had two touchdowns. With with double-digit snaps taken or double-digit carries in those six or seven games. So, J.K. Dobbins was very efficient at the end when he had that running back wall. Uh, golly, I can't speak today, folks. Running back one position. Obviously, the injury is going to keep you back. But he is reportedly not on the pup. 
now, and he's good to go for week one. And in a in an offense that does not have the receivers for Lamar Jackson to throw to, I think they'll be very run dependent. So J.K. Dobbins will get his touches, he will get his touchdowns, and he will get yards. Mm, I like it. I like that one. Barring injury, the, I think that's a very solid pick. Solid. I like it. Mm. Well, the cats. The cats back. <laughs> I don't know what the hell where the cat is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny at this point now. But I got another one for you guys. Juju Smith Schuster. Right. Oh, uh, he's everybody, trying to earn points back, Billy. He's trying everybody to remembers back. Juju of old, right? Fifteen hundred yards. Before TikTok, I do remember yards, before, before. thousand yards, and then he had the down year, right? When there was when AB left, and then he had the year after that down year. Now he's with Kansas City, where they have McCole Hardman, MVS, Travis Kelsey, Juju Smith-Schuster. There is so much talent around him. The way that they had talent around Tyreek, right? No, I'm saying none of those guys are top tier. But they're good enough to. You can't double team Juju every time, right? Well, Nico, Nico went down. Pitch. He'll be back. No, he's done for the season, right? I think so. Yeah. So uh, still, MVS is there. Sky Moore will probably step up and start getting some touches here. But look for Juju to have just an absolutely incredible year. They're saying he is doing very, very good in training camp. There's really not a whole lot to go off of with Juju because it's a new team, new roster, new system. So you can't base lot his previous stats based on this stats, but we do know Juju is a number one wide receiver when healthy with weapons out there beside him so he can get open. My homes does spread the ball. And oh, Mikko's not in depth for the season. Sorry. No. Mikko's good. I'm riding, I'm riding the Juju train. Juju. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know where, where to put Juju, honestly. Like I guess, <laughs> you know, the only the only person out there catching the ball other than Juju is Travis Kelsey. Maybe MVS has turns around, but MVS has always been a average wide receiver and talk in terms of like six eight hundred yards a season. And I think that's where he'll stay this year. And someone someone's got to catch the bulk of the yards other than Travis Kelsey, and it's it's got to be Juju. Okay. So, I'm well, like out with that one. Solid. Barrett, who's your number two guy? So, uh, number two guy, David Njoku. I didn't see that one coming. I know. Right now, he's the number 17th tight end ranked, uh, according to ESPN. I mean, sometimes he's going undrafted, but if you look at – now, you said win your fantasy football league. So we're kind of talking, you know, late game type. Deshaun Watson will be back. They released, uh, who, what was his name, Austin Hooper. So he yeah. is like, he's only 26 years old, secured in as the tight end one. He has he has a lot of talent, a lot of upside. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're if one of your top five tight ends go down, if he's still on the waiver wire, I would definitely pick him up. And who knows, maybe Jacoby Brisket will maybe that'll be a safety blanket because Amari Cooper is going to get double team like the whole time. So uh, I, I just like David Njoku. I've maybe been picking him up as a stash in certain deep, deeper leagues. Uh, but like, dude, outside Kelsey Kittle, Mark Andrews, a tight end position is just tough, man. Like, Anyone can break out. I mean, Dalton Schultz, like kind of how he broke out last year. Um, he, he, even a Mike Gusek, like you don't know how he's going to get used in, in this offense. Like, I just think um, I, I think you can wait on a tight end. I wouldn't say Najoku is probably like your starter, but like I said, if you can stash him, stash him. But uh, especially if you do have an injury riddled tight end, I know he missed some time due to injury too. But um, I, I, dude, I just like Najoku. Like I've always liked him. I've always had him in some leagues. He's just never panned out as like a fantasy star. But with Deshaun Watson late in the season after suspension, look out for him. I like it. The, I had Najoku getting picked up and in a lot of my leagues until the 11 game suspension. Then I dropped him again. That's what I'm saying. But you did say who will win 
your league. Yeah, Najoku could win you late game. I, I agree, one hundred percent. Yeah, but all right, Seth, who you got number two here? Oh man, give me Travis Etn. Oh jeez, sorry. Right. This is listen up, listen this up. Travis he has a, he has an injury. He hasn't done anything. You don't know how what? he's gonna be. <laughs> Travis Etn. Do you know? We all know who his quarterback is. Is Trevor Lawrence? Did you see what Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne did in college together? I did do what they, they were did. wicked. They yeah, were wicked I mean, together. Travis Etienne comes off the of play. He comes. You know, you know who Travis Etienne is Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> comes back and up. He's having a he's having an amazing training camp, and he's probably not going to be a running back. I would say ninety percent of the time he's going to go probably go out there in the slot, catch a lot of passes. So in full PPR. Travis Etienne is going to be a man to go to because he's going to be Trevor Lawrence's safety blanket out there for the underneath dink and dunk. And Etienne is fast, he's shifty, he's on it, he's quick on his feet. So look for James Robinson to be that power back. Then you have Etienne for your third down and back, and even probably in the slot most of the time going down the field. I think he gets a lot of points in full PPR. Okay, but who's getting the touchdowns though? Goal line, probably Robinson. Is James Robinson healthy? Yeah, he's good to go. Ready to go. I'm just actually giving you shit, Seth. I like actually like Travis Etienne, especially in full PPR, um, and as a as a flex play, for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't put him at running back one or anything, but I think well, he gives no. you a lot of value out of flex. Absolutely, right. I think he's a he's a flex demon. Yeah, I hope he has a good year. I like that one. All right, last for mine. <clears throat> Give me that bad man, Julio Jones. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah this is officially it. clown of the week here. No. Nope. He looked gas in like five minutes oh, of training camp. <laughs> if he it, was, if, did you see that picture? Oh man, dude. Was it against Miami? No, it was the next week he was gassed. Okay, because I was like, if there's any clips coming out of Miami's media session, I'm not taking a single word of value. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. It, it was AJ Brown is out there cooking today and they ain't showing none of those. But that's here we go. Juju, or not Juju, Julio Jones, right? They're saying he's looking like he's back in his prime. He's healthy. He's fast. He's athletic. He's Come physical. On. Six foot two, monster. I don't, there's not a lot to go off because he's been hurt the past two years. But <laughs> you have a chance. played like a full season in like three years. Then. Yeah, and I, I could come on here and bash CMC all I want, but I'm not going to. Okay. CMC Julio in the same exact boat. This is their year to prove Except it. Except for he's like years younger. Yeah, and they and they got Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. What are you? Chris doing? Godwin's out till week. Chris Godwin's out till at least week eight. Mike Evans is barely scratching the surface of a thousand yards right now. Julio <laughs> is there to catch a lot. Yeah, Julio and Brady. They're both super intelligent. Julio's a lot smarter than Mike Evans. Julio's going to be able to get open. He's going to sit down routes. He's going to be able to run his own routes on the opposite side when he's not the number one. Uh, Reed on the backside. Julio, I'm telling you, I expect Julio to break out for like 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. Oh my God, dude. Okay. If that, if he gets over 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns, you got to get a tattoo of his face on your calf. <laughs> God, I'm not that extreme, but I'll have to do something embarrassing. All right, if Julio gets All right, you got to do that you pancake challenge. Touchdowns. What's the pancake challenge? Okay, Bear's got to go sit in the IHOP for 24 hours straight, and for every <laughs> pancake he eats, he gets an hour off. That that's like that's like losing a whole league type of punishment. Yeah, We're but this, this about, is over a full this season. Is, this is a wild random take. This is over a said. full season though. I saw like, that on TikTok. All, by all the it's way. gonna take is Julio going down with a hamstring, and you're most likely gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess. And then I'll sit, I'll sit in the IHOP for 24 hours, and I promise you, I'd fucking kill 24 pancakes in a heartbeat, dude. dude. <laughs> it's a lot of pancakes. Dude. I'd, I'd be out of there within two hours. <laughs> That's a lot of pancakes. <laughs> two hey, hours. Honestly, we should there. break. We should bring that up in the the, the uh, in person. I'd love to do yeah, a punishment. Person. Yeah, Need that way Vance else. has to do something because he stinks. Yeah, I, Thirteen. I did, not take, I did not take last last year. People, I wonder. Hey, hey, can we just change the keepers? Because I'd love to keep Jonathan Taylor. People don't uh, 
don't draft Julio Jones. Instead, draft the guy that I'm about to tell you. All right, who we got here? Right, who do you got? Okay, somewhat of a small homer pick, but who cares? Oh, yeah. Mike Jersenki, folks. I no, 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 no. Jalen Waddle. Yeah, mm-hmm. actually, Jalen Waddle. Listen. Okay, clearly not an, a wide receiver one. I'm just talking about late in the year, a PPR. Okay, Waddle had 100 plus receptions. You know, I think it'll just move up. I think his yardage and touchdowns will move up because of Tyreek Hill. I'm, I'm not saying he's going to have, like, him and Tyreek could have a thousand yard seasons, but I'm saying what I'm saying is that for his average draft position, you know, he he's getting picked at pretty good value right now. Like, he's a, a really good wide receiver, too, in fantasy. And Tyreek's not even technically considered. They're not considering him a wide receiver one right now. So just think about the ceiling that Waddle will have in PPR leagues. Now, normal leagues, I don't I don't know. I haven't played a fucking normal league since like 2003, okay? So don't ask me. PPR is the way to go. Let's just get with the times here, okay? Actually, wasn't Flint's league the normal? The in-person league? is no PPR, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't PPR. <laughs> uh, anyways. What I'm saying is he's going to get even more looks. He's going to get even deeper looks. And he's going to have a lot more. I, I named off the, the the cornerbacks that he's going against a couple of shows ago. I mean, he is going against some scrubs. Okay. Straight up. Like eight scrubs in a row at the end of the season. And look at that division. The Jets corners stink. That's two games. The Pats corners are, I don't even know who they are. And you got the Bills, who Tredavious White's going to be on Tyreek. You know what I mean? So I'm telling you, in a PPR league, Waddle's going to average a decent amount of points every game. I, you know, I, I just I haven't been able to get them personally, but uh, just keep an eye out. I do have a bonus fantasy uh, after Seth's pick. Go ahead, Seth. A bonus, huh? Uh, the Homer in me, the Homer in me wanted to take CD Lamb because he's the bona fide one. But I, I straight away I said, okay, the most important position for fantasy is a running back. So that's why I think yeah. Brees Hall will win people fantasy championships. Ooh. And you're you say, oh, but the Michael Carter, Michael Carter is good, right? He had a lot of yards. He was he had some touchdowns. But Brees Hall coming out of the draft was a perfect score prospect. Okay, he was a 99 in every in everything you could ever think of. And there's only so many there's so many running backs. It's all running backs in baseball that have that score. Uh, Derrick Henry was one of them. I think Adrian. I don't want to say Adrian Peterson because I don't know if that's true or not. I think CMC might know. There's a couple of them that have perfect scores. I don't ask me to tell you who it is, but. I think Brees Hall takes that job if, if if not by week two, by week three to four, he'll be the full time starter. And a, from an offensive line that went out and got help, I think the Jets are going to be a good run game because of Zach Wilson out here uh, banging Mills, but also getting injured, uh, you know, pulling a thigh or whatever it was. <laughs> Jets yeah. will probably finish third in the division. It, yeah. I think Brees Hall has a chance to score a lot of touchdowns, get a lot of yards, get a lot of carries. And then if Zach Wilson can't find anybody to the field, he's going to be a catching machine. You saw that at Iowa State, right? He was very good out of the backfield. Any way you get the ball in his hands, he's a playmaker. So I think Brees Hall could potentially come in and be a fantasy stud if he can get that winning job. And if Robert Sala wisens up and says, hey, we drafted this guy for a reason, let's go ahead and just start running him like we should. Absolutely. Yeah. They, it's, yeah. Yeah, Waddle did light up uh, this top five Saints last year, Billy. Waddle finished top. <laughs> Waddle finished top fifteen in overall uh, receiving in fantasy last year. So <laughs> just just consider that. Uh, I do have a, a small bonus uh, kicker out of Miami, Jason Sanders. He's back, baby, all the way. Didn't he miss a game winner this weekend? Yeah, he did. But you know what, Seth? He had oh. a fifty-seven. He had a 57 yarder before that, um, so he, he's all the way back. Look, so Greg Zerloin could boot a 57 yarder, but when it came to crunch time, he was brick, brick, brick. Yeah, he's a sucker. 
But Greg yeah. Zorling did just get a starting job. So hey, Jets. Just, 